Good, Good day, day everyone. everyone. I am Kyle Jarek Sabay. And I am Micah Rubio, reporters, reporters for, for today's, today's topic. topic. So let us discuss about Chapter 3 on Science, Technology, and Nation Building. Entitled, Science Education in the Philippines. Our learning objectives are as the following. First is to gain knowledge on the concept of science education in the Philippines and its importance to us. To know the advantages and disadvantages of technology in education. Next, to know the governing agencies of the Philippine education system. To know what is the K-12 program, to know the different science schools in the Philippines, and lastly, to find out the different problems in science education. The concept of science education and its importance. The concept of science education focuses on teaching, learning, and understanding science wherein exploration of theories and models to assist instructors in effectively teaching scientific concepts and processes is part of teaching science. Next, learning science entails both pedagogy and the most intriguing component, which is assisting students in understanding and appreciating science. And lastly, comprehending science or understanding science include the development and use of science process abilities, as well as the use of science literacy in understanding the natural world and daily activities. Moreover, science can help us in our daily lives. To dig deeper on science education, we will now tackle on how science education is important in our lives. First, it enhances or develops the learner's questioning skills, values and attitudes, and critical thinking skills. These abilities are crucial needs in one's own development to have a better understanding and thinking. Second, it is basically intertwined with technology and industry, which are the major areas of development being prioritized by our government. Third, scientific learning is important and helpful to the development of our country and present our cultural identity. Lastly, the basic education program caters to the needs of the students, such that the curricula is designed to prepare the students for a higher level of learning. With this, science education would help develop and nurture the student with a given proper education. Next, we are going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of technology in education. Advantages of technology in education First, it helps the children to stay motivated during the learning process. Due to technology, one can access different ways to gain progress in learning. Second, it encourages more communication between teachers and parents. With technology, communication has become more easier and accessible to all, whether you are near or far. Third, technology options in the classroom are very affordable. So if there are advantages, well, as expected, there are also disadvantages in regards with the technology in education. So first would be, the presence of technology can be distracting to students. This is because students are so up with technology, time is not anymore managed. This could affect the learning schedule of the student, thereby decreasing his or her grades. Second, technology can make it easier to cheat relying information from others. With an open and easy access to all, students would tend to cheat without the knowledge of anyone. Third, using technology can cause some students to disconnect from the classroom. This may be because of network interruption or slow internet signals. In line with the science education in the Philippines, right now, we will move on to the three governing agencies of the education system in the Philippines. First is the Department of Education or DepEd. It is an agency for both elementary and high school levels. It oversees the implementation of the school's curricula and school programs in both elementary and high school levels. And it is headed by Dr. Leonor Liling M. Briones. The other one would be the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED. It was created in the year 1994 under the Republic Act 7722. It is an agency for higher education to oversee the system of higher education in the country to formulate policies, 
plans, and programs for the development of public and private higher education. And it is headed by Dr. J. Prospero Popoy E. De Vera III. And lastly, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or also known as TESDA. It was created by virtue of Republic Act 7796, otherwise known as the Technical Education and Skills Development Act of 1994. TESTA is a government agency tasked to manage and supervise technical education and skills development in the Philippines. It is responsible for providing policy directions and guidelines for resource allocation for technical, vocational, educational, and training institutions in both the private and public sectors. And now we will move on to the K-12 education system. So, what is the K-12 program? The K-12 program aims to develop learners to make good judgments and apply what they have learned, which may eventually have great environmental or even social impacts. It provides learners with knowledge of competencies important in the world, of work, and in knowledge-based society. With this program, students are nurtured and educated accordingly in order to prepare themselves in the higher education. The K-12 program consists of the following. K stands for kindergarten, which is followed by 12 years of basic education, namely primary education of 6 years, junior high school of 4 years, and lastly senior high school of 2 years. Now, let's talk about science schools in the Philippines. Ever since the K-12 program was implemented, the Philippines have created science high schools. Now, let us discuss the first two science schools in the Philippines. First, the Philippine Science High School System, or the PSHSS. It is a government program for gifted students in the Philippines. It is a service institute of Department of Science and Technology. It offers a free scholarship basis for a secondary course with a special emphasis on subjects pertaining to the sciences. Another would be the Special Science Elementary Schools, or the SSES project. This aims to develop Filipino children equipped with scientific and technological knowledge, skills, and values. Its mission is to provide a learning environment to science-inclined children through a special curriculum that recognizes the multiple intelligences of the learners, promote the development of lifelong learning skills, and foster the holistic development of the learners. Now, we are on to our last topic, which is problems in science education in the Philippines. But, despite of its importance and relevance, we can't deny the fact that there are such encountered problems in science education. So what are those? The first problem is the ratio of teachers to students and the ratio of students to classrooms. Next, the lack of science laboratories. Next is lack of science education facilities. Next is small fraction of teachers that are qualified to teach different science subjects, and lastly, limited scholarships and few projects of the government. With this, I hope that the government should give more importance to the situation so that the said problem would be addressed. And that is all for today's discussion. We hope that you have learned and gained insights about the said education in the Philippines. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.